The public release of footage showing an unarmed man being shocked 13 times with a taser by police in Western Australia has thrown the spotlight on the way police use tasers. The president of the Police Association, Vince Kelly, says he's confident new guidelines drawn up after the death of a man in Alice Springs last year will ensure tasers are used appropriately. Vince Kelly has joined me to discuss the use of tasers in the Northern Territory, along with John Lawrence from the Criminal Lawyers Association. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks, Letitia. Thanks. I'll start with you, Vince Kelly. Um, police classified tasers as a less than lethal weapon. Given the rising death toll in Australia from tasers, do we need to reclassify that? Well, first of all, I think that the uh, use of the, the language by media is quite provocative. The rising death toll as a result of tasers. Uh, I think an objective analysis of the, uh, the actual scientific evidence, the coronal evidence, is that tasers themselves uh, are not directly responsible for deaths. And, and I think that's being lost somewhat in, in during the, this debate. Four people have died, though, in Australia linked to taser use. Uh, surely that's a concern. Well, I, th I think the reality for police officers is irrespective of how someone dies in custody or in, in an involvement with the police, it's always, of course, of concern. All these deaths are reviewed. Uh, any death involving police is reviewed through a coronial process or an internal process. And the use of tasers is con and all police use of force is constantly reviewed in the Northern Territory in all jurisdictions. Uh, police are required to submit reports about use of force incidents and that goes for everything, not just tasers. John Lawrence, uh, what lessons do you think should be learned from the West Australian situation where the unarmed man was shocked 13 times? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a shocker. I don't know. I mean, I've seen it on the television and it, it's disgraceful. And I mean, I don't know what they thought they were doing. But what has to happen is that if a police officer is to take recourse to a taser and its potential, then it should be in a life-threatening or a serious harm situation for the officer or his colleague or the public or indeed the subject that he's going to deploy the taser upon. Vince Kelly, the death of an Alice Springs man in it last year uh, has sparked a, a review and, and rewrite of guidelines. Why are those guidelines on taser use confidential? Oh, well, that's really a question you'd have to put to the Commissioner of Police. Uh, I think the, the reality is that operate, police operational um, safety tactics aren't necessarily a thing you, uh, you provide to the general public. So you don't think that, uh, that those guidelines should be made public in order for people to understand uh, what situations police are allowed to use tasers well, in? Well, I, I think what, what the public should, should know is that police are, proper, are properly trained and are being trained and they're accountable. The fact of the matter is, is that police can't use force without being subject to some sort of accountability. And if, it, if it's inappropriate or if it's determined it's possibly inappropriate, police have a variety of people looking at their actions, not only the Commissioner of Police as the employer of all police officers, but also the Northern Territory Ombudsman, and in some circumstances the Northern Territory Courts, which means people like Mr Lawrence. Uh, when police or others end up charged with offences, they're involved in the, in the judicial process. So there's clearly a, a, a accountability process that, that involve police, not just with tasers, but with all Whenever police exercise any of their powers, there is scrutiny applied to police conduct in the Northern Territory and across the country. John Lawrence, uh, police have stressed that under their new guidelines, the tasers are not to be used as a compliance tool. Is that something that you see as, as being achievable? Absolutely, but it's October 2010. They brought them in at the beginning of 2008 with no guidelines. And people said, cave, cave, beware, beware. These should be strictly used in specific circumstances. They didn't want that. What happens? April 2009, a man, a 39-year-old Aboriginal man with no prior criminal convictions is behaving erratically, a man who has a history of mental illness. The two police officers attend, one's got a taser gun, he's in the police force for six months. The first thing he does is use the taser gun, zaps the man, he goes down. His colleague tries to arrest him in that situation. It is unsuccessful, so he zaps him again. The man gets up. He's then capsicum sprayed. Twice in the face, he runs away. He's eventually rugby tackled by one of the police officers, and they both put him in a three-point hold. Within minutes, he's dead. He has a heart attack. Guess what? He's got a chronic cardiovascular difficulty like so many Indigenous men. Now... It's all very well saying we've got guidelines and we've got accountability in courts and so forth, but it's all after the event with the police. Instead of doing it at the inception at the beginning, they say, no, no, trust us, we'll bring these in, we'll, we'll monitor it ourselves, we'll have our own reviews, etc. And what happens? This is what happened, what's happening in Western Australia. So what we said at the beginning is, 
bring in the guidelines from the inception. Make sure that no officer takes recourse to a taser unless he's in a life-threatening or a serious harm situation. It's as simple as that. I've got to say, I think uh, John's incorrect in saying police introduced tasers without guidelines. I mean, that's simply not true. There was a training regime, there was trials, there was policy and procedures put into place. And I think uh, not only the West Australian incident, but in the Northern Territory, what you see is a, a refining of those guidelines as time goes on. Uh, and and we, we've never argued that tasers should be used for compliance. And, and I also, I'm, I also think John uh, is being a little mischievous, if I might say, uh, implying that, uh, that the police officer with six months training somehow did the wrong thing. He, he followed his training, and, and I think that was acknowledged by the uh, coroner. Look, no, the it wasn't. It wasn't. The, the coroner's the, finding the, was the that the, the use of tasers on that the, occasion was inappropriate. Well, that was his finding. It's no, in his I, judgment. I, I think, John, th he might have said it was inappropriate, but the... the the training the, that man, the police officer involved, followed his training. It, it's another question about whether it was um, whether it was appropriate. Well, his training led to an inappropriate I, consequence, I, didn't I, it? I don't, I don't accept. I don't accept that his actions were necessarily unnecessary. I mean, that's that, that's the coroner's finding, and he's entitled to that. He's entitled to that uh, particular view, but I, I don't necessarily accept that's the case. Um, the fact of the matter is, is again... Well, I hope the police force accept the coroner's view. Um, I hope the police force will... I was trying to answer your question, but uh, uh, Mr Lawrence, uh, because, of his, uh, because of his professional background, he's good at this, but I was, I was trying to answer your question and, and say to you that, yes, uh, a lot of the people, sadly, that we deal with, in fact, the vast majority of people that we deal with uh, are Aboriginal and have health problems. And when there is a violent confrontation with police, irrespective of whether the person's drunk, irrespective of whether the person's mentally ill or just angry and has got an issue with police and the, them going about the lawful uh, conduct, is that if there is a violent confrontation, um, lots of things happen to the body that can't simply be sheeted back to the taser. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Vince Kelly, John Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks, Letitia.